All right, ladies and gents, welcome. We're going to act like I didn't just screw up my intro for this cast previously, and we're just going to start over here. Uh, we've got a 1v1 game between two players at 1480 ELO. Uh, well above the majority of the player base. Well below the pros, somewhere in the middle. Could see some cool, exciting action here. We've got Huskarl Marks in the red, playing as the Burmese. And then in the blue, we have Colin Woodruff playing as the Hindustanis. Uh, the map was Mega Random, and Mega Random has generated a little bit like Acropolis here. I actually really like this. Looks like the potential to wall is still kind of there. I'm not sure if you'll be able to wall back here or not. But man, imagine making a little circular wall at the top and going fast castle or something. I could see that. Hindustanis are definitely seen as one of the best hits in the game right now. I have actually seen more YouTube comments complaining about the Hindustanis and the Gurjaras than I think any YouTube comments <laughs> complaining about Sivs over the years. I may have had something to do with that. If you're watching my cons and I haven't exactly been quiet on my feelings of the Sivs, but I feel like they're at a pretty good spot balance wise. Now they are still strong, the Hindustanis, but they were nerfed recently. So their villagers aren't as cheap. And over the past year, you know, they've lost Halberdier and there's been a couple of tweaks here or there. But I do think for 1v1s, it is just a civilization where you, you can't do... You have so many options, you can't make that many mistakes, right? The cheaper villagers is helpful. If they go for knights, you have the faster attacking camels. And if they go for archers, you have skirmishers and also a unique unit in the Ghulam. So, certainly a civilization that is going to be good to have for Megrandom. Uh, the Burmese, on the other hand... I think they're slightly underrated in some ways, but they aren't necessarily seen as very strong if the map isn't closed. Uh, you get the wood upgrade for free in each age, which is an underrated bonus. And then their infantry is super, super strong. But it's kind of hard beyond that man-at-arm opening that we can sometimes see to use infantry in, in AoE 2. So if you've seen the map Acropolis where you start up on a hill, that map tends to have tiny wood lines. Here they actually have some pretty big chunks. This wood line is mesmerizing me. It's shaped like something, but I can't really figure out what it's shaped like. I'll, I'll go back to it later. Uh, also, blue has like five wood lines. I don't know how many trees that equates to. 113 trees versus 86 trees. Okay, so blue's got a little bit more wood at the top. But eventually, you want to take the bottom where you have uh, safer wood control. I don't know about safer, but you have more wood control, stones, golds, and whatever else. Players start with eight tiles of gold at the top, uh, berry bush, deer patch, and then also some stone. Elephant with an erect snout. <laughs> um, not seeing it. <laughs> but thank you, thank you for using the word erect and snout in the same sentence. My day has been made. <laughs> hmm. All right. So I think what I would do, and what I would do, may not apply to these two, but. I think I would go for a scout opening if I were Colin. Now, they don't know how far apart the opponent is, but if you spawn near the edge of the map, it's always safe to assume that your opponent also spawns near the edge of the map, which means you're pretty far away. So scouts can be good for that reason. If I were the Burmese, I think I would go for man-at-arms. Uh, it's just taking advantage of your bonuses as quickly as possible. Get the wood upgrade for free, like I said, and then you get extra attack in your infantry per age. So I would just try and, you know, be aggressive. Hope for the best. Uh, might get a couple kills. Might really set back the Hindustanis early, and then you can kind of adapt from there. We have Colin on the way up already. Hasn't scouted his opponent. Second Lumber Camp now. Definitely seems like some type of a scout play. And they also started with, I think, six villagers at the start in this game, by the way. That's why they both researched Loom as early as they did, uh, because they were both pop-capped at the start. The second lumber camp for red coming up. So how many golds do we have in the middle? Six tiles there. Make it nine. Make it 12. 15, 18. Aye, aye, aye. There's just three tiles over here as well. 21 tiles of gold in the middle. And then it looks like there's two additional stone spots. Huskarl Marks, you are my favorite mid-elo player. I love it when people do this stuff because I do this all the time. Your opponent hears the attack bell. They get annoyed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. And I, as a caster, was even like, oh, there's an attack I'm missing. And I looked. 
Uh, well played, sir. All right, Colin's going to make a stable. There it is. And we'll see what the execution looks like. Now, what can be nice here for the Burmese is you could just go Spearman defense. I still like the idea of having an offensive presence. The only thing I didn't talk about with this map, by the way, is that there's four relics, and those relics are on either side of the opponent's hill. So actually, if you look at it from Red's point of view, I guess obviously now he's scouted a lot. Ooh, attack that vill. But yeah, obviously now you've scouted a lot, but if you saw that the relics were on elevated land, similar to what you had in the sides of your base, you probably could have determined where your opponent was. A little sloppy from Red there, loses some scout HP as the stable was being placed. And again, this just comes down to execution, getting your wood, farm upgrade, adding some farms, adding some scouts. At higher elos, you can just assume those things are going to happen with ease. At this elo, we cannot necessarily assume those things are going to happen. Blue getting pop capped, for example. But yeah, even if the walls go down... It might not be too bad for the Hindustanis, because Hindustani scouts actually do a bit more damage against buildings. Um, and even if Hindustanis don't end up breaking in, I don't think it's ever bad to have some scout control on the map. And good work there from Huskarl Marks. And needs to be careful, sees the opponent has more scouts and pulls away. I like it so far. Biggest question for me is, can you wall to the edge of the map here? Because I don't think you can wall on this terrain, but I think you can wall on... Whatever you would describe this terrain as. Like, again, can't wall here, can wall here, I think. The villagers headed over this way to build that palisade wall. Spearman gets attacked. Well played from Blue. Blue saw the Spearman was weak because of the Snow Leopard there and also had the hill. And Red definitely is overextended a little bit. It maybe didn't expect Blue to create so many scouts here because you can wall up. Colin says you can't dot 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 in chat. Wait, that's that's the Colin. Colin Woodruff. <laughs> what up, buddy? <laughs> I'm also pretty sure Huskarl Marx is in my chat because someone said Huskarl Marx is me. No spoilers, guys. <laughs> but the fact that Colin said um, you can't dot 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 makes me feel like he's a little bit annoyed by that. So I, yeah, I guess you'd have to wall this way. If you wanted to fully wall. Or you can just control the map with scouts. And so far, that's working really well for Blue. And Red continues to take some bad fights. I think he's hoping that Blue's just going to run into the Spearman. But you need to get a timing right there. Hmm. Well, I would say the map is a little bit unfair towards Colin then. Because I'm pretty sure that Huskarl Marks can wall to the edge. I think we could have walls here and here. But Red's got the army control. Uh, has to be careful. Spearman! Nope. Oh boy. Yes. Pokes. Nice. And scouts are going to be in an interesting position. You obviously want to kill villagers. But there's a lot of pointy spearmen around. And the stress of the situation has led to Red needing to build a house. Forgetting to build a house. And one of the best times to lose a villager is when you're... Currently housed and can't create more villagers. So that actually ends up working out. Quick walling here from Red. Ooh, the moves. And the scouts are going to get away anyways. But good job from Red. I like it. Behind this, Blue's actually making more scouts. And you might just want to accept that you're not going to be able to do much damage here, Blue, so you can control the rest of the map. How many farms do we have here? 14 farms for Red with Horse Collar. And here we've got 16 farms for blue, also with horse collar. You can tell blue so badly wants to wall up that area. And wow, even forging for blue. Dang. Takes the fight. Red backs away. Great, great scout control from both players. This has been a good game. These game type of games are fun, man. I think they're really fun to play. They might not be quite as entertaining to watch. Just scouts be scout be scout, but. Blue really not messing around. Oh, he made a second stable. Okay. I would say take the fights far away from your opponent's base because the Spearmen are not going to be able to make it out across the map. And Spearmen, you can always outrun. It's something we've seen in this game. There is a hole there for red. And blue doesn't seem to be just assuming that red's walled up here. 
And that... Well, actually, I could see that being really bad for blue. It's too tempting. You have to run in here, right? Okay, so Colin's like, ooh, a hole. And now suddenly Red's like, oh, crap. I hate myself. What is wrong with me? But the scouts could all get trapped in here. I'm trying to compute this in my mind. 1400s, quick walling. 1400s, quick walling. How good is it going to be? Palisade. All house. Palisade. Yeah, see, now Red doesn't have scouts out. Red's still making scouts, too. Holy moly. TC sniped two of those bad boys. I guess you just go in for a villager and hope for the best here for your Colin. And doink. Gets the vil kill. Nice work. And I think keeping the spearmen inside of your walls is important here. Ah, I thought he couldn't wall, so I went second stable. Okay, that makes sense. Still a little risky against the Burmese, obviously. But I don't see it as the end of the world to have extra scouts. But certainly at this point, like, you've seen your opponents walled. Continuing to make scouts, I think, is a little questionable. Probably just had them in the queue and just forgot at this point. Red clicks up to castle. Okay, so... What's Red going to do? Is Red going to try and go knights against the civilization that can go camels? Or is Red going to try and play into his civilization strengths and maybe goes like monks and infantry? Um, oh! Uh, it's going to be barracks. That could be really good. Blue has brought all the scouts back home. Probably just worried that his opponent's going to be uh, like trying to run in here or something. And probably has just thought and said, well, actually... He doesn't have much. Okay, Blue, if you see this, I th oh, this is a bit of a weird one, but I think you take this fight. You'll have the hill. You'll have forging. I think you could take this fight and kill the spearman. That could actually be really helpful. Oh, <laughs> Red wants forward barracks. He just researched supplies. And he wants to go long swords. And Blue doesn't take the fight. Red wisely makes the barracks over here. Okay. I like this from blue. The blue. Oh, second mining camp on gold. Okay, so blue's going to click up to Castle H here in a moment. And you have to lock that gate and you have to build behind it here, Red, because those scouts are Hindustani scouts and all their stable units do extra damage against buildings. He's through. And he's going to leave again. Okay. Well, he knows what happened last time and that is a lot of spearmen, so I think that's fair. Okay, so Blue's probably like, well, okay, you know, this guy can wall to the edge. I used to like Mega Random. Mur, 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 mur. What else is going on, though? And he looks, and he sees the barracks, and now he's probably like, oh, that's not so good. So I think what I would do, oh, yeah, Colin and I think alike. i drop three ranges, and I'd prep to go Cav Archers. I would not try Archers because you're... A minute away from Castle Age, by the time you have archers, you're going to have like two or three of them. It's not even worth upgrading at that point. I also, and this is a tip which might be helpful for midi lowers, I would cancel auto farm. You need wood and you need gold. You do not need more food. More food is, at least at this point, not going to be that helpful. Actually, I'll be honest. What I like to do is I don't actually cancel auto farm because I'm lazy. I just pull villagers off of farms, like six of them, let's say, off the farms. Put them into the TC and send them to wood. Holy crap. Blue tried to get in again. It was rewalled. Spearmen are always looking around. We've got long swords battering down the stables right now. Actually, they're men at arms. They're not even long swords. <laughs> Here comes Blue with the cab archers. Now, this will take time to mass. And that's one of the worst things about cab archers is how much time it takes to mass them. Otherwise, they're one of the best units in the game. Okay, here come the men-at-arms. Again, not long swords running into Blue's base. We haven't seen Blue really exercise many quick walls here. Did have a, like some time to realize the opponent was going to be running through. So it must be a little bit distracted. Mod Canera's on the way. The Cav Archers are now there. And we're going to have a few monks here from Huskarl, as well as some scorpions. And he's just like, I I don't like the Burmese. Or maybe he does. I don't know. But let's just assume I don't like the Burmese. The Burmese are awkward. I don't have good skirmishers. I have good infantry and I've got good monks. How do I close the distance with slow infantry and slow monks? I've got to build it all on the front. 
Really good decision here. Also, wow, apparently his monk control is pretty good as well. He's going for different cav archers. Blue has to back away. Now, Blue, I don't know where your scouts are at the moment. Where are those scouts? Okay, these scouts are just, they're resting. I would really like to see those scouts turn into light calf once you see monks. Gold is kind of a concern for Blue at the moment. Red, you need to make a decision here on what you want this push to turn into, though, because you don't have any manganels, you don't have any way to threaten the town center. And Blue loops around with the Cav Archers, heard the Wololo, didn't react immediately, loses a Cav Archer. And the worst part is that he gets to share all of the trade secrets with the other team now. That's not actually what happens in this game, in case you're new. That was just a stupid joke, but okay. Uh, man, Longsword City, let's go! They've got plus three attack, right? Because you get plus two attack for being in Castle Age. Plus the additional plus one he researched. Okay. Cav Archer's trying to counter attack. This is nice when your opponent's going for forward buildings on you because they might not have defense at home. And the scout's still not really helping out and getting any value, but Blue's looping back home. Blue has the villager lead. Cheap Hindustani villagers coming in clutch here. I should point out that Bloodlines isn't in for the Cav Archers, so they have 50 HP instead of 70 HP. The stable's where you research that. There is still one there, but I think Blue's distracted. God, that is a lot of Longswords. That's enough Longswords where a TC could be taken out if there was no Siege. Like, if the Cav Archers and the Light Cav were out of position, TC could go down. Blue finding it hard to breathe. Finding it hard to rest. I think Red was going to get that relic. <laughs> a little ambitious. And okay, so the siege is waiting. The siege will go for the for the mangonel. That or sorry, the ram. Excuse me. That's perfect. That's the way to do it. So your TC stays up, and your cav archers just need to whittle down these long swords. Still not easy, and it's still not fun. And you could tell like there's just so much randomness with the long swords that. Blue is having some problems managing this whole situation. But at the end of the day, the TC still stands. And Blue still has a pretty nice position to fight. And it's going to go for another Manganel here. Blue is housed and needs more houses for population space. Is going to do that over here. This is a nice find. 32 on gold. 7 on wood. 9 on food. 33 on gold for Blue. <laughs> That's a lot. The scouts looking to help out here. We have redemption now for the Burmese player. He's just been on one TC here. He's just put a lot of focus on continuing to produce infantry and microing his army. You can tell Blue's distracted because of how much he has on gold. But I, I like the attempts here. Hard to do. But it's something you should try and do. And even if you fail like 100 times with it, you're only going to get better with that type of move. Hmm. Saracen economy, uh, arena economy, you know. <laughs> Just so much gold. <laughs> uh, scorpions are pretty nice to mix in with other things against cab archers. I just can't really say I've seen it that frequently mixed in with long swords. But when in Rome, I guess. Boom. Nice shot. Villagers are not liking life. There's, there's not many Lumberjacks to begin with for Blue. Blue's Manganel, though, can take out the Scorpions. Nope. Scorpions split from red. Dang. Thumbring's in, though. These things are firing really fast. I can't help but feel like there's going to be a couple big Scorpion shots, though. And it's, it's going to whittle down the CA because the CA don't have Bloodlines. God, and it, like, seriously, this is insane from Red. He's just producing all the time. It's nonstop production. And Blue can micro and whatever else, but he's not producing Cav Archers all the time. But he has to micro, and he's got 34 on gold still. And <laughs> Red's going to try and convert his range. Can you imagine how confused and annoyed you'd be? <laughs> no more Cav Archers for you, bro. Dang. Blue is overwhelmed. He's distracted. I'm sure he's incredibly excited that I'm currently casting this game with the direction this is going. A nice Meganel here for red, but it gets whittled down. 
due to Blue's excellent Cav Archer micro. And the game will continue. Blue soon will have the stone for a castle. I wonder if Blue's going to be tempted to drop it on the front here just to free up this whole area so this economy can breathe again. Uh Oh! Uh-oh. A little bit of a misclick when he went to go do a couple other things. Lots of horses died. 16 cab archers though versus 20 long swords. I'd still put my money on the cab archers. I don't know how red scorpions have been able to dodge these shots. Red has the best scorpion micro in the world. Is that fair to say? I think that's fair to say. Because who else would you say has good scorpion micro? And don't say Huang. Huang just makes a lot of them. Mm, villagers coming forward to build another siege workshop. Monk goes down. Scorpion micro it away, of course, because he's a beast. No, just kidding. Blue, nice work. Long swords do a lot of damage, man. This group of long swords has 13 kills. It's not that crazy, though. I, I mean, the, the thing that's sad for Red is the fact that he hasn't really had like a, a smooth three town center economy behind this like he has sent everything into this that he can and so far hasn't been enough uh that magna will be converted here which will make things very dicey very very dicey for blue wait monk died oh never mind never mind i didn't realize the monk was gonna die the castle should go up for blue and suddenly red's gonna need to be looking elsewhere sheesh um, hey, T90, I've been stuck max 1290 for years now, and I hit 1300 just now when I delayed horse collar until I clicked up, like you said, last cast. Well, nice. I'm telling you, man, like, off certain builds, it, I mean, everything's situational in this game, right? So that's not going to be the only thing that may be the difference in that game, but off certain builds, it can be good. That's what I'm here for. Wow, that is a lot of resources for red. Enough resources where I'm thinking he maybe wants to go for, like, Imp? Can you go fast Imp here? Blue, if you ever wonder what could have gone differently for you in this game, the main thing is Bloodlines. Um, and remember, you made a lot of scouts, right? So you should always be thinking if you're making a lot of scouts anyways to get Bloodlines. So that that's an easy fix for the future. And that's for anyone who's ever going Cav Archers off a of scout build. It's one thing if, like, you end up going Cav Archers and you didn't have a stable already. Because sometimes you can forget the stable, but you have had that. And the Cav Archer production's also been fairly slow uh, throughout the fights. Like, you have a lot. You have 12 in Q now. That could happen a little bit earlier. But the booming from Colin has looked really good here, guys. And Red's just got this massive AI army just chasing these Cav Archers around. And Huskarl Marks... <laughs> I assume he's obsessed with infantry because of his name, by the way. <laughs> I didn't really touch on that. He's actually on his way to Imp. Now, when you have an infantry siege monk army, any of those things, the idea is to force fights. Force fights meaning go into a position where they have to address you. And if you're not doing that, they're just going to counterattack you and run away from your army and, and avoid you. So the key thing here for Red to have any chance in this game is to drop that castle where you can trep down Blue's castle and where you can push constantly. And oh my god, are you serious, bro? Are you serious? He's going to convert more buildings. And Blue... <laughs> Blue deletes them. <laughs> Blue deletes them. Red, you are a pest, but the best kind of pest. And oh, Blue killed the villagers over here. Denied the TC. What a great game, right? Because Blue recognizes I need to avoid that army. And Red, I think, is going to try and go for a YOLO forward castle to go for some type of trebuchet push. Oh, man, that's messy, though. I mean, you're down by 30 villagers right now if you're Red. And I'm not sure about sending the villagers out to the TC right now, but I can understand it because it's messy. Long swords and some spearmen and some scorpions go home. Unfortunately, that's, they're all very slow, and now you see Colin running away. Uh, with the Cav Archers, but also with the Villagers here. Okay, so Colin has just done something that I think we've all done once in our lives. Maybe twice, in my case, 16 times. He's gone Imp with the TC that is next to the Aggression. 
Now, to be fair to him, he only had two TCs, and this isn't exactly safe, but I'm worried for him. If red makes trebs, red can afford one trebuchet. That if red goes for the TC instead of the castle, that blue might not make it to imp. We have 92 villagers for Colin Woodruff. We have 49 villagers for red, but red's got 32 long swords and currently has 9 plus 5 attack. It still doesn't help against cav archers. The scorpions will help against cav archers, though. Uh oh, uh oh, blue, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. If red didn't go for the forward castle, trebuchets would absolutely not work. But because the forward castle is there, the treb is an option. And where are you going to go, red? What direction will you send that trebuchet? Oh god, we have longswords raiding the left-hand side! Alert! Alert! The longsword raid! Red is using longswords like players would use knights, and just using the mobility of them to avoid the cab archers. This is the first time red's really attacked this side. Blue is over here for a long time. Okay. Blue is 40 cab archers. And blue will make it to imp. <laughs> oh, man. Red's economy is rough, but it's YOLO. And blue's economy is... It's also kind of rough, and I'm wondering where blue's going to get golds right now. So after this gold, blue won't actually have any more gold. Obviously, you want to get bracer here for your cav archers. Oh, this is really tough. Yeah, you need Bracer, and then you need to be engaging against this, but that's still a lot of Scorpions. No Bracer yet for Blue. He's just been under pressure ever since the Scouts were made. Blue's currently pop-capped because all the houses have gone down to these vicious long swords that are about to be two-handed swordsmen. And uh, Colin is just... Oh, wait, there is gold here. Excuse me. Okay, so Colin could take that gold, but he's just under so much pressure, and Colin just taps out! He taps out, and he doesn't feel like he can do it. What a unique game that was. I mean, think about it from this position. Everything that Blue can do doesn't give him an easier time in the long term. So, if he tries to engage against this... First off, I, I would have liked to have seen him try and engage against this, right? But if he tries to engage against this, there's opportunities for Red to convert the Siege. The Scorpions get some big hits. The Pikemen Two-Handed Swordsman get some hits. You never know. Still think the Cav Archers can actually win that. But it's like, let's say 50-50 at best, maybe. If he avoids this at all and counterattacks, which is an other, another option, and it's something that worked really well for him earlier, uh, then Red can just treb down everything here and he loses control. So you almost have to stay here, but if you stay here, there's a castle. Um, and then you've still got other things to deal with. <laughs> Colin says, was working from home on lunch. Okay, that's, that's why you resigned? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it totally makes sense. <laughs> I mean, that might be part of it. But I think the other part of it was also, oh my god, this is so much pressure. There's so much I have to do. I don't know if I can do this. Let's just go work. <laughs> Let's just go make money, you know? Um, GG was a really unique game there from Red. Ultimately, I think Blue making as many scouts as he did kind of opened up that opportunity uh, because the castle age time was, was a little late. Um, a lot of people are going to look to the lack of bloodlines for Blue and say that Blue could have had that, blah, blah, blah. And that's all true, but you have to give credit to the opponent for making the game messy enough and sloppy enough where certain upgrades don't come in. Um, that's something I try trying to do a better job of as a caster. So I thought that was a pretty good game. That was also pretty cool how both players uh, who ended up playing that game were actually in my chat at one point there. And wow, the resources collected was really close. But yeah, I think the Hindustanis are the superior civilization. So we'll play their Huskarl Marks. I wonder if Huskarl Marks is like a trend. Does he always play infantry civs? Maybe. I don't know if it was a random civ game. I'll have to look at his profile at some point. But yeah, 1400 ELO is fun, man. So many crazy things. And the thing is, is that these players knew a lot about their civs and they knew a lot about the game too. Like, Huskarl Marks, he wouldn't have done this without Burmese most likely. Maybe if he was Goths. Got the monk technologies. 
Really made use of some of his eco bonuses too. It was solid.